Hello, welcome back to another edition of Hobby News Daily. I'm still Danny Black, but today I'm joined by Jameson Long, owner of Port City Sports Collectibles. What's going on, Jameson? Hey, Danny, how's it going, man? Things are things are great. Well, that's that's awesome. Um, I am uh, excited to talk to you today because we have a mutual friend. I'll give her a shout out, Kayla, who's uh, been to your store and she knows we do the LCS spotlight. And she said, "Yeah, there's this guy who's doing things right. You got to talk to him. He's running his store right. He's doing good stuff." Um, and, and so, I, I anytime I hear that, I, I, I want to see what's going on. And so, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having us. I mean, obviously, uh, those are big shoes to fill. Uh, backing up uh, Kayla's recommendation, but uh, hey, if we have her stamp of approval, I'll take it, and hopefully, we can live up to her uh, her level of expertise for you and your audience here today. Uh, absolutely. So let's take a step backwards. Uh, no, nobody's ever born owning a sports card shop. So tell me how you got into cards, and tell me uh, what made you make the either brilliant or crazy decision mm -hmm. to open a open a card store. Yeah. So, I mean, it really is full circle for me because this, my first job ever was in a sports card store back in when I was a teenager. So, um, you know, I'd been a avid sports and card collector, you know, uh, when I was eight, nine years old, uh, grew up as a Braves fan. Dale Murphy was my favorite player growing up, you know, right on into the nineties Braves and all that, that, those fun times. But yeah, it was totally full circle, um, you know, collected, uh, you know, kind of through high school, probably, uh, got a little less passionate about it in college as other things take priorities. Um, did that whole scene. Uh, probably I dabbled back into it when I got out of college. That was actually um, that was actually like when LeBron came into the league. So that was like an exciting time for basketball oh, cards. Yeah. Upper Deck was doing all kinds of crazy stuff that people had never seen before. You know, who would ever pay $500 a box for a box of exquisite <laughs> basketball? Um, you know, so I remember personally opening boxes of 20, uh, uh, 2003 exquisite did not hit a LeBron, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, and then, uh, started a uh, corporate career long after that, that kind of, uh, took precedent, kind of just really immersing myself in that and trying to, trying to exceed at that. And then, um, uh, met my wife, you know, and we started having kids. And then when we had kids, I was a whole more started dabbling back, you know, heavier back into cards. Uh, really, really kind of immersed myself into that. Probably that, you know, my oldest son is 15 now. So probably about 15 years ago, got really back into it, super heavy um, and really never stopped since then. Uh, was just, you know, a collector. Um, uh, you know, I still had my corporate career back then. Um, and then, you know, was doing that whole deal. And then as I was kind of uh, moving on through life, maturing and, and reprioritizing what mattered in life and what was important, uh, it came uh, uh, apparent to me um, that uh, time and flexibility became a little bit more important to me than maybe just all, all about the money. Um, so uh, me and my family decided to make some changes. We, I got out of running the corporate rat race that had seen us move like, I think, six times in 14, 14 years, you know. Um, you know, coast to coast, Florida, California, back to Florida, up to Boston, just all over the place. Um, and with the same company, but I mean, great company put me in position to be able to do what I wanted to do. So I told my wife, I said, I think, you know, I think you can make a career out of this card thing. You know, there's, there's a lot of basics. If you don't overthink it, there's just a lot of basic <laughs> economic fundamentals that you can, if you, if you have that kind of background that you can kind of ride. Um, and so did that. Six months in, COVID happens. I'm like, I just made the worst decision of my life. Oh. Who's going to want to buy cards when the world is ending? I just left this awesome, you know, this great paying career job. I have, you know, uh, two kids at the time. Now we have three. I have a wife, to, you know, all, all the family to support. And now the world's going to end and uh, nobody's going to want baseball cards or any type of sport card. And, uh, you know, who would have ever thought that would actually have been the greatest thing that ever happened? Uh, cause all the cards I had held and collected just jumped exponentially. You know, you didn't have to be smart at all. If you bought it and you held it for three weeks, it was higher than it was the previous three weeks. Um, so rode that train. Um, we had moved. So when I left my corporate job, let me back up just a second. We were up in the Northeast. Um, and when we were looking at, um, scaling back and kind of just, we didn't know what this new life was going to look like. I hated the cold weather. I'm from North Carolina, North Carolina originally. 
Uh, and my wife, even though she's from up north, we met in North Carolina. She's like, well, why don't we go back to North Carolina? I was like, let's go. So we came down to North Carolina. Um, at the time, we had kicked around the idea of a card shop. Um, but that, like I said, that's when COVID happened. I was like, eh, probably not the best time. People don't even want to be in the same room as one another, let alone, you know, having massive people together. So we put that on pause and then kind of um, just was doing internet. And my background is kind of more in the high-end realm. I did like high-end basketball is like really my, my favorite stuff. Kobe, Jordan, LeBron, uh, Steph, that type of stuff. Um, okay. So we're doing that, was able to broker that stuff and just buy and sell my own stuff. Um, and then, uh, then when things kind of died down, I really wanted to, uh, I, I looked around the, the area, thought there was a better opportunity to offer better customer, uh, experiences, uh, just really engage the community in the hobby. Uh, you know, I had two boys, 15 and 12, like I wanted to have a space like they thought was cool and like they would want to hang out with, cause usually around that age, they stopped wanting to hang out with you. Um, and so uh, even somewhere their friends would want to go. So that's what kind of started me on my path and my journey here at Four City Sports Collectibles. Um, the name comes because we're in Wilmington, North Carolina, and that is the nickname for the town, the Port City. Um, and so um, that's kind of where we started the creation of Port City. And uh, we have just now been open a little bit over a year. Um, and things, uh, you know, it's crazy. I look at now like our our worst days, you know, when we took a look at like what we do on a daily basis, uh, are better than our best days, you know, six months ago. That's how much that's it's grown. For the hobby, Jameson. Yeah. Yeah. That's how much it's really grown. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, we just provide a space, you know, it's kind of like field of dreams. If you build it, they will come. We just try to try to provide a space with as many options and, um, and, and great customer service to people that makes them want to come back for more. And, uh, and they've, they've received it well, and uh, we've been more blessed than we deserve, and uh, I'm thankful for that. So, Okay. I, now i got a ton of questions for you. That was good <laughs> stuff. So, first of all, I've got twin 13-year-old boys, so thoughts and prayers. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, yeah exactly. <laughs> i got um, a driver now, so one just got his permit last week. So, yes, well, definitely daughter, thoughts and prayers. My daughter's 16, so we're not going <laughs> that too. Um, yeah, yeah, don't get me started. I, I, yeah. I, I do this instead of paying a therapist. You there, know. You go. there you go. Um, that's not true. I still pay a therapist. <laughs> um, so when you opened the store, what was your vision of the store? Not just from a community standpoint, because obviously that's important to you, but from, I mean, from a nuts and bolts, really like from wax versus singles to how are you going to get inventory? How are you going to get allocations? You know, I, talk, talk to me about just the nuts and bolts of starting the store and what that took. Um, I mean, luckily, again, just because of my career, I probably, um, you know, I had a, I was able to kind of come in financially okay, um, be able to um, to buy product. I was buying product as I knew we were ramping up, just so we had some inventory when we started. Um, you know, buying singles, you know, storing them up, knowing that we would need it, and even willing to, you know, my my perspective, like year one, was like. Uh, if, if I have to overpay or pay where there's not much meat on the bones, that's fine. I would rather people come in from day one and be like, wow, this doesn't really look like a shop that's just starting up. Like they have inventory, both singles wise and wax wise. Um, and not only that, like, you know, again, even if I had to take super skinny margins, I wanted to make sure we were in line with what market was. So sure. even though I'm not paying, you know, wholesale cost on Prism, um, I'm paying in the secondary market. My retail is going to look very close to those guys that are able to pay wholesale price for products like Prism and stuff like that. Because I was trying to just earn the, I wanted to earn the trust and the business and the support of people that came in the shop. I didn't want things to come in and their first impression be like, oh, things are grossly overpriced. Uh, right. This guy is not in reality. Da, 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 da. So that was a game plan I was coming in, you know, fully ready to embrace. Um, luckily, because I have been around uh, the industry for so long, and I do had a do have a lot of great friends that have shops or um, in the distribution game. Um, I was able to use those connections to help kind of get me established. Um, I had some really good friends that were able to get me set up and going with uh, probably tops probably a little bit sooner than than most. Um, so, on that. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Uh, we still we're still not direct with Panini. 
Um, but uh, but we have we have our outlets that we're able to, you know, obviously we're not getting it a wholesale, but, uh, you know, get it to where we can bring it in and still offer it at a, at a good fair price to the customer and and, and make a little bit. But, um, but, for but year yeah, one, so that was kind of the thing. Was that yeah, for year one? That's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was, it was, it was, it was really good. I mean, once, once we got full, cause we were using some distributors, we were using like peach state and, and just again, other, uh, LCSs and stuff that I had relationships with, with, you know, if they had a, few, if they were getting a product and they had maybe an extra case that they were getting in, they may let me buy, you know, half the case or whatever, just to get us going. Um, and once tops came on full board, that was like a real big game changer for us. Um, as far as product sourcing, because I was taking a lot of my time because again, I was working really hard. Like I was scavenging everywhere just to be able to bring it in at a decent enough price and keep it in the market. I would rather not have the product and, I would rather not bring the product in if I couldn't bring it in and have it at a decent price. So sure, which makes perfect sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when you establish yourself. Yeah. So if 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 you are, I, I tops approved, mm -hmm. you have to have a certain standard in both back end and front end. Yes. Side I know is is more software data related. Um, and just keep basically that you keep books, <laughs> yeah. you know, but the front end um, of, of, of stores across the country and the more owners I talk to, the more I'm hearing this, you, I'm guessing before I even ask the question, you don't look like the old school card shop. You don't look like dingy yellow lights. No, no. I, what, so, I mean, so, one of the, one of descri the, describe the store. Yeah. One of the, um, you know, one of the, when I went into it, kind of my thought process is like, I want it to be somewhere I'd want to hang out. You know right. what I mean? Like, uh, and on, and to take it further, like, you know, sometimes it's the mom, it's a mom bringing their, their kids in, or, you know, if a, if a, if a husband is coming with his wife or a boyfriend is coming with their girlfriend, I don't want the girlfriend or the wife to be like, man, get me out of this place. This place is like a glorified flea market. That That's not the vibe we wanted to have. We want it very clean, I mean, if you, you know, I can send you some pictures of the shop after you can look at We're we're very wide open. I mean, we could probably bring in twice as much inventory if we wanted to, but that's just not the vibe I want to go with. I want it. I want it to have more of a modern, cool boutique vibe than like, a, let's just cram as much stuff in the square footage as possible. Uh, and then like have people tripping over stuff, can't find anything, da, 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 da. Um, that's just not the vibe we were going for here. Um, so we have like a little lounge area. Um, you know, where there's, um, you know, there's two soft chairs, there's like, you know, there's plants in there, you know, to make it actually look like it's like welcoming flat screen TV. We have, we have a customer facing bathroom actually out in the showroom, you know, so okay. you know, that's something you don't find a lot, you know, where the customers have a, you know, if someone runs in and they need to use the restroom, there's a restroom for them. Um, and then we have, it's very open, like the whole showroom is like in the middle is open. I won't put anything out there because I want people to be able to move around the shop freely. Um, and then, you know, on our trade nights, you know, this place packs it in. Uh, so we kind of need that space. Honestly, um, we're kind of busting at the seams when we do events and stuff. So it was definitely, you know, even before top started rolling out this whole hobby shop 2.0, uh, lingo that they've gone with, um, that was already my perspective. Anyway, I come from my background is the automotive field. Um, and so on the manufacturer side, that's, they always, they want their dealerships to look nice. You know, they don't want it to look like an old car lot. They want it to look more like a mall. You know, you walk in, you got the fancy machines, everything is sleek design. Everything is clean edges. So that was already the mindset that we had. And then even when it went from the, to the decor on the walls, I was, I bought like stuff, like, I don't even care if I sell any of it. We do sell it. But like, I just want cool stuff in the shop. And like, if we sell it, great. If not, it looks awesome on the wall. So that's kind of our perspective when I line the shop. So like, you know, usually it's all big name jer jerseys. Like Kayla brought a Notani jersey from us one time she came in. Um, and so we have all the biggest guys, you know, Curry, Mahomes, Jordan, Messi, you know, Acuna. It's all the biggest names, memorabilia, Ooh. iconic pictures on the wall. So that's kind of the vibe we went with. 
Well, I'll give you my address if you ever have too much. Uh, <laughs> you, know, you need to give some away. I'll let you know. What I tell people uh, is my wife wouldn't let me have a man cave at home, so I had to open this place up. <laughs> <laughs> I, with the TVs and the plants, you know, it, I'm not sure it's a man cave. I think it's for the whole family. Well, I, I gotta get. I gotta let her have a little touch on it. You know, she has to soften it up a little bit for me. So. Hey, I've been married 20 years. That's, <laughs> that's the best decision you can make every day yeah. is to say yes and apologize when you wake up in the morning because you're going right. to do something stupid that day. Right. Um, Wax versus singles. Mm -hmm. What did you envision and what's the reality now today? Uh, per, kind of percentage wise. Um, you know, we do sell a lot of singles. Um, uh, I work really hard on that. Um, I would say that's one of the areas I put a lot of emphasis on um, to me. So this is how I, how I view it. And, you know, maybe I'm right. Maybe I'm wrong is Anybody can order product from the manufacturer, take it out of a box, slap a sticker on it, and put it on a shelf. That's that's easy. The but one thing like I never want people to say is like, man, we've been into Port City Sports Collectibles last three times. Every time we go in, it's the same cards in the showcase. Yep. So we scour very hard to we buy it, we leave it, give it a little shelf time. If it doesn't sell, even if we have to break even or whatever, even take it. We're going to turn it. We're going to get it rid of it because we want you to come in the next time and be like, whoa, where are all those cards I looked at last time? Well, they're gone. So Good. so like yep. if someone is like debating, oh, well, maybe it'll still be here last time. People that come to the shop know that stuff doesn't sit around here long. So if it's a card they really want and not that we're forcing them to make a decision, but we do want them to have a reason to continue to keep on coming in. So even if new wax products aren't coming out, well, we got to go see what's in. Uh, the singles uh, showcase at Port City. Like this week, we had seven new downtowns to start the week. I'm already sold out. Okay. You know what I mean? So just like having that fresh, hot inventory. Uh, and then like the way I approach our bargain boxes um, is is probably a little bit different. Um, and and we, we get a lot of compliments. There's a lot of people that come in and say, and I, I'm not trying to like, I'm not saying this in a bragging manner. These no, are the no, best this bargain boxes. The interviews. I want, yeah, yeah. I, we, these we are the like best more. bargain boxes we've ever seen. And because it, I don't put stuff that just is nothing in there. It's so if it's a base card, it like if there's very few base cards, but if it is, it's like Mahomes, uh, yep. Curry, um, Otani, like. Everything in there is solidly a dollar card up. You're not 25 cents, not 50 cent cards. Uh, and then there's tons of autographs, jersey. I'm right, dollar, because uh, we run out of space in our showcase. So our, you can find $30 cards in our bargain boxes. Um, now, it's interesting you're bringing those up because yeah. one of the biggest things that I've been surprised by in yeah. this LCS series is how many stores have successful bargain boxes. Yeah. That that is becoming a staple of the shop. Mm -hmm for a good value for the interactiveness with the, with the customer and a good way to rotate inventory. I mean, or is that something and I don't want to put words in your mouth that you're, you're, you've had more success. You're more surprised by them when you opened maybe. Probably so. I mean, definitely the, the, the showcase cards bring people in. It's good. eye candy. We do sell those cards, but yeah, I mean uh, we have people and we just kind of switched our setup where we got the box even more accessible. Now we laid out long tables and there's chairs around the table uh, where people can just sit down and they just love, I mean, people will pull out stack of 20, you know, people yeah. spend a hundred, you know, there's hundred dollar cards in our showcase, but people more often than not pull $20, 20 cards out of the value boxes for a hundred dollars than buy a hundred dollar card um, right. out of the showcase. So, and it's funny too, cause we'll have like 25, $30 cards in the showcase sometimes uh, if it's like something fresh or something and we, we won't sell it. And then like the next week we'll drop it in the bargain box and someone will buy it. <laughs> <laughs> perceived value they want to yeah. know they're getting a good deal you know it, it, it's funny it, and yeah so um but yeah yeah we have a lot of success with our value box and that's something again we we approach that just like the showcase like we're all like almost every day we're dropping new stuff into those value boxes um cool. and, and again we want people to have to dig through those things um and because even if they dig through it it could have been a card they saw last time but they weren't maybe they didn't feel motivated to buy it last time, but now because they're going through it because they never know, they might pick that card this time. So we always want to give them um, um, that motivation or that initiative to need to delve down into the boxes, come look what's in the showcases um, and things like that, and, and just create that stickiness that makes us, um, you know, 
we, you got to stop there. We got to stop there at least once a week just to check out what's new. Speaking of which, um, you're you're talking from a kind of a macro view, yeah. but if we look at a micro view, you know, your days as an owner of a shop have to be crazy. Yeah. So I just got to get a little glimpse into to, and I ask everybody, what's kind of a day in the life like? Um, and I'm sure it's different every day. Yeah, I mean, it's really dependent. Um, you know, one thing is, is always inventory. So I'm always looking, what are we low on? What do we need? What's selling? What's not selling? Um, you know, so definitely an inventory, um, you know, and that's wax and singles. You know, I'll, I'll look at the showcase. Okay, what's been in here too long? All right, let's look at, let's maybe get more aggressive with it. I always, I like to give, like when we get new singles in, I like to give the people locally the first opportunity to buy that stuff before I start getting aggressive, like putting it for sale in, on Facebook or Instagram or, you know, through uh, maybe a repacker that I know that's looking for inventory for a new product, whatever. So I always prefer to give local customers. So then after I've seen this been sitting for a while, um, then we'll look at other opportunities. Again, wax, you know, what's selling well, what's not. Look at the market, you know, how much has it gone up? How much is it going to cost me to re-get it back in? Does it make sense at that price point? So those are kind of usually some initial steps. We'll take a look at our online sales. What did we sell on eBay? Um, uh, what did any sales on the website? Then, um, you know, we um, we do breaking Monday, Wednesday, Fridays. So I'll start, we'll, we'll plan out what our breaks are for the next day. Um, and then uh, And then a lot of the day is whatever comes up. You know what I mean? Um, so, so what's going on today, of, for example, as we record here today? What is your yeah? Network? So so today um, I do have to step out briefly to help my wife with something. But then we have JSA in the shop this afternoon. They're coming in to um, uh, we bought a, a private collection. Uh, a lot of it with not you know not the ideal certifications you would want to take it into the secondary market. So we probably have thirty something pieces. They're going to review for us today. Hopefully, you know most of them pass. Um, so we're going to have that going on. Uh, I know we have several customers coming in that have already uh, reached out to us about bringing in lots that they'd like to sell. We do a lot of buying through the store. Um, then we have a local show that starts tomorrow. So we'll have to start prepping for that, getting the showcases out, start thinking about what type of in what inventory we want to take to the show. Um, <laughs> and then we have to handle the customers as they walk in the door. So, um, and right. usually uh, as we talked about before, uh, you know, there's always something that pops up that you, that you weren't expecting that day. Sometimes it's good, you know, and, and, and we're thankful and, and, and thankful for those things. And sometimes it's not as good, uh, but that's the price of doing business. <laughs> well, I call it the never boring business. You know, yes. you're, you're, it's definitely not boring. Um, no. You have a lot of um, uh, points of contact where, where, and you mentioned some of them. Where can people, if, they're, if they don't live in, in the Wilmington area, um, that you, you have breaks, you have online, give everybody that information so, so they can get a hold of you. Sure, Danny. Yeah. Um, we're super active on Instagram. You can see our, our handle down here. It's at Port City Sports Collectibles. Um, we do a lot of kind of our announcements and our communications through that channel. And that does automatically swing over to our Facebook page as well, which is just Port City Sports Collectibles. Cool. Um, we do breaking, a lot of breaking actually on TikTok. Um, and then we are about to start doing a little bit more probably on whatnot as well. Um, but we've had a lot of success on TikTok. It's a little less crowded than whatnot. I feel like, you know, it feels like everybody is breaking on whatnot. So it's like 12,000 breakers competing for the same audience. So we've kind of found a little niche and a nice little loyalty over on TikTok. but, uh, you know, we'll see how long that lasts with, uh, pending, uh, uh, legal bills and stuff like that, but uh, we're riding it while we can, but we probably will be getting a little bit more active on whatnot, which we already have uh, a page set up and we already have about a thousand followers over there as well. Um, Cause we do do single sales as well as we'll do some breaking. Um, and those are our main uh, points of communication. We do have a website, which is just www.portcitysportscollectibles.com. Uh, mainly we just have wax on there. Uh, not much of our singles inventory, but if anybody is looking for anything, or is in the market or wants us to find something best place is dm us on instagram or through our point of contact on our website and we'll do whatever we can to try to help you out jamison long i appreciate your time thanks danny pleasure being you on know, the show i appreciate it. if anybody goes through the wilmington area um it's definitely stop by and check you out um you were a part of top trip night so i assume future ones you'll be a part of as well um, and, and so definitely stop in, stop in for those. 
Um, I have an inside source that says you do a real good uh, red night. So, um, we'll, well, thank you. And, and thank you for being on LCS Spotlight. To everybody else, we'll see you next time on the next episode. Have a good one.